John, I think, was 22, right? As he mm-hmm. was when he won the title, 22. Okay, only been fighting the UFC for a s- short amount of time. Opens the fight with a flying knee on a legend. Yeah, on a legend. You gotta have some balls. Just balls. You gotta have some balls. balls. Here it is. Boom. <laughs> that is so crazy to do. Opening seconds of the fight. But at the same time, you don't have no fear of the takedown. Well, he wasn't afraid of takedowns, and also he was very proficient at striking. It's time to talk about the legendary performer, about the greatest fighter of modernity, and in MMA in particular. About a real example in terms of sport and an unstoppable champion who stands alone at the top of mixed martial arts for more than a decade. Get comfortable as you are about to see the documentary on John Jones and his full story. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. Childhood and early years. Let's start from the very beginning and go over everything in order. Jonathan Dwight Jones was born on July the 19th of 1987 in the city of Rochester, but lived and was raised in Endicott, New York State. The boy was growing up in a big and religious family. Father Arthur worked as a pastor in church and mother Camilla worked as a nurse. The young man spent his entire life in the USA where he worked, studied and grasped the basics of different disciplines. In other words, he was a true American. But we would like to share an interesting fact. In summer 2020, on his Instagram page, Bones suddenly announced interesting news. He decided to do a DNA test for his ethnic origin. And here's what he found out. After months of waiting, I finally got back my Ancestry.com results. Come to find out I am 42% Nigerian. Can't wait to learn about my culture, to research stories about all the great warriors and history. It feels amazing to finally know where all this awesomeness originates. Parents raised four children in orthodox austerity, regular classes in church instead of parties, entertainment and gifts. And parents didn't have any money for all of that anyway. An older daughter, Carmen, helped mother to look over her brothers while she was at work. She likes to reminisce that the family simply didn't have time for other events because the kids were always busy. And in her brother's words, they were okay with that. At that time, they were naive church kids, deprived of adequate socialization because of the dangerous streets of Rochester. Once John and Arthur, who is a year older, got their new bike stolen. And one would think it's a rather ordinary situation if prior to that minor thieves wouldn't have asked the boys to close their eyes and count to 30. As they opened their eyes and didn't see their bikes, both rushed home and cried on mother's shoulder. The guys calmed down only after their mother drove all over the city and pointed at those bikes that were dropped at the town's outskirts. At a certain point, John himself considered a possibility to become a pastor in church and follow the example of his father. This decision was gladly supported by the family, but in the end, it didn't happen, and we got the greatest fighter of all time. It was just a time for me to really evaluate what I thought about religion, and I've decided that I was going to stick with my religion and continue to believe that everything happens for a reason. And now today, I look at it this way, you know, you have these three pro athletes, and and we're all happy with our lives, and then we have a sister who's in heaven watching it front row. Unfortunately, John's sister, Carmen, passed away at a very young age. And that's what the guy was talking about in an interview right now. Yeah, definitely. In 2000, the oldest of us all, my sister, passed away uh, within a two years time of figuring out she had brain cancer. And it was really tough for us. You know, we pretty much had to raise ourselves for those two years, you know, cooking our own meals and, and, you know, even putting tubes on her nose to give her 
her uh, insure medications and things like that. It was a lot for us. It grew us up really fast and it made us really uh, just appreciate every day and every relationship that we have. It's also known that the family of our hero, where he was born and raised, has a rich sports history. There is an opinion that people who grew up side by side with their close ones usually tend to take the same paths. As they live in the same environment and conditions, their aspirations, goals and interests often collide. Jones's two brothers have played in the NFL for a long time and a younger one named Chandler even achieved success at the Super Bowl. We're always on the same team. But uh, yeah, Chandler is an absolute stud. Arthur is an absolute stud. These guys are very, very gifted uh, athletes. And I'm glad to be associated with them. Um, you know, our goal is to make our last name a great last name. And uh, my brothers have done a great job representing themselves. I'm so incredibly proud of both of those guys. Speaking about Bones, though he never had any ambitions in football, the guy took the sporting route as well. Before he got interested in MMA, John headlonged into wrestling. At a younger age, he achieved decent results in this discipline, both in high school and college. For example, it's known that when he was a student, Jones won the local junior wrestling championship, and then a first division state championship and regional northeast junior championship in Greco-Roman wrestling. It was all about competitiveness. If it comes into play, Bones will do anything in his power to take the leading position in the rankings. Moreover, this interest and subsequent success did him a favor. When he was wrestling in high school, he was very promising and most importantly, he really liked to do it. But despite that, after graduating from high school, the guy did not see any prospects in this direction. He was about to enroll in a new institution, so wrestling workouts is the last thing he was thinking about. Luckily for him, the coach stepped up and planted an idea in the teenager's mind. If you will be good enough, you might get a free education. And that's exactly what happened. Jones enrolled into college with a full scholarship, but at a certain moment, he went through a breaking point in his life. His girlfriend got pregnant and he found himself at the crossroads of making a tough decision, stay in college or move to New York to care about his future family. Bones chose the second option. He left college, moved to his friends, began to work as a bouncer and do everything he can to support the mother of his future child. Mixed Martial Arts What's up guys, it's John Bones Jones. We're here in Albuquerque, New Mexico and uh, it's time for us to go get some training in. As we already stated earlier, Jones had a decent background in various disciplines. Literally from the very childhood, the guy was interested in football and played as a linear defender together with his brothers. And by the way, namely since then, he got his Bones nickname from his coach because of his frail build. After coming into middle school, he began to do free wrestling that eventually turned into serious workouts under close supervision. It's known that Jones won the NJCAA National Championship out of Iowa Central Community College. And after moving to Morrisville State College, where he began to study criminal justice, Bones continued persistent work and was always making progress. Even the fact that his girlfriend suddenly got pregnant due to which he had to postpone his studying did not break the mentality of the future champion. Yes, he worked as a bouncer at a local bar, Yes, the couple was definitely struggling financially, the free time wasn't enough, and life was putting spokes in their wheels. But either way, our hero did not want to lead a meaningless life and work at a place he hated from morning till night. Already at a young age, he knew what he wanted from life, which actions he had to take to achieve his dreams, and what sacrifices he would have to make to put his family into a secure and stable spot. Just think about this. Having a decent base that you might count on from the very start and not getting away from the thoughts about a successful future in the professional sport, where would you go? MMA. If that's your answer, then your thoughts overlap with young bones. Not wasting too much time, the guy began to take the first steps towards his goal of becoming a mixed style fighter. The beginning stage of Jones's career looked like this. A small garage where he was training most of the time 
a couple of books on boxing and Muay Thai, and a smartphone that he used to watch videos on YouTube. We have a short piece of his interview in 2009. At that time, a young talent has already arrived in the UFC and was about to have his third fight against Jake O'Brien, where he talked about some aspect of his early preparation. Journalist, we all know your striking is somewhat unorthodox, so how exactly did you adopt this style? And what do you do to improve on your stand-up? John, I came up with my style of striking just by being very open-minded and accepting knowledge from wherever I can find it. When I first started off with Team Bomb Squad, we didn't have a striking coach, so I took it into my own hands to study footage on the computer, like YouTube videos, and some of the guys would find different websites and just go out to Barnes & Nobles and purchase different Muay Thai books. I just really took it into my own hands to be a real professional, attempting to know all I can know. I guess between reading karate books, Muay Thai books and Kyokushin books, you just take all this different knowledge and you mix it all together and there you go with an unorthodox stand-up game. Exactly like that, the great career of the best fighter of modernity began in a small garage in a form of a constant practice, experiment, workouts and interaction with materials that were accessible on the web. Shortly speaking, everything was very simple and limited, but as history taught us, quite efficient. Professional Sport I, uh, I honestly believe that I was born to fight. I really believe it in my whole heart, you know, and some people think that's silly. Um, but I think a lot of great athletes, people who are really good at what they do, um, it's more than just what they can do in the gym. It's something that starts way before they're known in the arenas. It, it's something that is like a, an internal belief. And uh, I honestly have convinced myself that I'm not designed to lose. Willing to escape that life John found himself in, surrounded by continuous struggles, attempts to make decent money and constant work, he decided to become a professional MMA fighter. The guy dedicated as much time as he could to workouts, practice and studying, which soon allowed him to try his luck in this discipline. Yeah, I think it's I think it's coming from those shitty backgrounds, man. Just coming from shitty backgrounds. You, you know what the other side of life is. Yeah. To try to escape it. You, you just got to keep moving forward for all the people who never got to escape it. You know, you just got to keep moving forward. They never said it was going to be easy, but it's usually always worth it. The MMA debut of young John Jones took place on April the 12th of 2008. This date marked the beginning of the great fighter's legendary career. His opponent was Brad Bernard. The bout took place in full force productions at the catch weight of 210 pounds. Things started off rather quickly. Bernard went for an attack and John, who relied on his wrestling background, immediately began to cut the distance and search for an opportunity to score a takedown. The young prospect got behind his opponent's back and started racking up control time at the fence. Soon, he began to utilize legs and attempted a submission. Right, now he's got the rear naked choke. Can he make him tap? No. Yeah, he's got those long legs. He couldn't finish the choke, but Bones did not stop on that and advanced to mount. A couple of shots were thrown and fighters started to switch positions again. Brad did everything he could to fight back and even managed to get back on his feet. At first, he pressed John to the fence, but ate a knee in the clinch and turned his back to the cage. Soon, the young guy doubled his pressure and began to throw whipping strikes. Bernard tried to slow the pace down, but eventually got tossed by Bones. In the end, it seemed like he figured that it's useless to resist such power combined with age and skills, so he didn't really try to hold on and accepted that he lost via TKO. A little cocky behavior there, you know, raising his hand a little too soon. And if he didn't have the intention of Bernard before, he has it now. Bernard is out a first round. And from Jones' standpoint, it was a perfect performance in the debut. Literally a week later, a ready and most importantly hungry for success prospect had his second professional bout. On April the 19th, he went up against the Brazilian with a record of 2-1, Carlos Eduardo. This time, the fight was held at the local organization, Battle Cage Extreme. Starting from this fight, John Jones picked the light heavyweight category. 
The action took off from the very first seconds. The Brazilian tightly grabbed his opponent's leg and did everything he could to take the fight to the ground. Already by that time, Bones' defensive skills were on a decent level, so he did everything he needed to stop the takedown. In one of the sequences, he attacked Carlos with a knee, but accidentally hit the groin. After the time of the break expired, the fighters exchanged kicks and Eduardo went for another takedown attempt. As you might guess, such a tactic did not lead to anything good. John effortlessly defended from another takedown and went in on aggressive offense himself. He confidently took on the role of a first number and began to throw strikes from every angle. A couple of precise strikes knocked Carlos down and significantly increased the chances of the doctor's stoppage. With the way he... With his body. His body and the way he threw that knee. And he, you know, Carlos has some blood coming out of him. I can't tell if that blood's coming out of his nose. It looks like he might have a cut above his left, his right eye. Yeah, he's hurt. He's hurt. All of that looked so impressive that the commentators started to compare John with Anderson Silva. There was a little time left, so John couldn't finish the job in the first round. But the guy didn't stop on that. As soon as the bell rang, Bones continued to attack the Brazilian. He cut the distance with a quick Superman punch and pressed Eduardo to the fence. After which the prospect executed a takedown and began to pressure him from the stands. He wants the he wants the stand and bang. Eduardo saying, "Let me up, stand up." Soon the referee intervened and allowed Carlos to get up. After that, Bones turned on his onslaught even more. The Brazilian didn't want to give up and tried to throw his opponent on the canvas, but a timely counter-attack from Bones worked against himself. Oh, and he was able to reverse it there with a throw, and now he's going to keep the pressure on. Good two, two, three, four good left hands. A um, little celebration we could probably do without there. Eventually, the fight reached the end of the second round and the guys made it to the final one. In the last three minutes, it was all over rather quickly. After the very first exchange, John threw a right hook and smashed Carlos Eduardo. Neither one of the guys. Oh, oh that's it. Right uh, he's hand. out. Oh, he's out. And he ate a left there, too. John uh, Jones, big yeah. right hand. Well, there it was. <laughs> the second stoppage victory in a row, and by a stiff KO. The potential of a young fighter spoke for itself. For John! While prior to this fight we stated that John entered the cage another time after just seven days, this time his next appearance took place six days later. On April the 25th at the local Ice Fighter event, he faced Anthony Pina. Unfortunately, it's impossible to find a tape of this fight on the internet. However, there is a playlist with images that show the main moments of this fight. The young prospect from Rochester took the initiative and pressed the opponent to the fence. Then he quickly performed an amplitude throw and got to a dominant top position. After that, he used ground and pound and topped it off by grabbing his neck and executing a guillotine. The official record of the fight? 15 seconds! Three consecutive stoppage wins in three weeks. Impressive, isn't it? It kind of resembles the old times in Pride when fighters could have multiple fights in one night. Jones's fourth appearance in the professional league happened on May the 9th at the United States Fight League tournament, War in the Woods 3. His next opponent was a fighter whose name would be perfect to practice at the speech therapist, Ryan Verrett. Connecticut's crowd witnessed that Bones not only could use the ground game, but also easily show off his striking skills. As soon as the fight started, Verrett landed one low kick, and that was the only thing he was able to do on that night. You ask, why? Because in the next exchange, John threw a precise right hand that instantly dropped Ryan. The follow-up was unnecessary because while falling on the canvas, the guy extended his hands which indicated that he was unconscious. A TKO in 14 seconds in the fourth professional fight. A great start to a career.
40 days later, our hero went up against Parker Porter, who by the way would be on the UFC's heavyweight roster in the future. According to the available information, a young and talented prodigy continued to solidify his reputation as an absolute finisher and ended this fight in just 36 seconds. 22 days later, Bones broke into the cage once again. On July the 12th, the next day after the birth of his second child, he entered the octagon of Battle Cage Extreme, where he already fought on April the 19th. This fight had a championship status, and John's opponent happened to be the American with a record of 2-2, Moses Gabin. The very first amplitude throw caught up to the poor guy in 20 seconds from the start. Throughout more than a minute, Jones was putting relentless pressure on Moses, threatening him with permanent damage from everywhere. Total control, volume of strikes and mentality of hungry Jones painted the picture of absolute dominance. When fighters got back to their feet, Bones did not let his opponent breathe even for a second. Heavy shots barraged Gabin like a devastating storm. Knees in the clinch, elbows and now spinning kicks and back fists. The arsenal of that guy was incredibly diverse already from an early period. Perhaps having another child doubled if not tripled John's motivation as nothing else can explain such a furious desire to rip Moses' head off. All in all, the promising fighter acted in this manner till the end of the round, smashing the American in one-sided fashion. But it wasn't the end. We have the next five minutes ahead of us. The second round began with Jones's active movement around the octagon. The prospect was occasionally catching Gabin with jabs and kept him at bay. Soon, the latter made a lethal mistake as he decided to get close to a guy who almost killed him in the previous round. As you can see, another takedown with the throw did not take too long. Moses spent a couple of moments wasting the rest of his energy and Bones actively helped him with that. Why do we say it like that? It seems to us that you see everything for yourself. In one of the episodes, Gabin even began to shake his head, appealing to his cornermen and letting them know that he doesn't have neither stamina nor desire to keep going. John broke that guy as after a couple of rather light strikes, he fell on the canvas and accepted the TKO loss from Bones. Yeah, that's it. He's done. He should stop. Stop it before he gets hurt because he had enough. He, he probably broke his nose in the first round. Thus, John Jones became the light heavyweight champion in the local promotion. 6-0 to zero and all stoppages, guys, in just three months of the professional career. Sexual chocolate! Jones! Path to the UFC Well, now the most exciting stuff begins. As we already said, between April the 12th and July the 12th, John amassed a record of six stoppage victories. Such an achievement was enough for the 20-year-old guy to get noticed by the major MMA league. Very soon, UFC representatives reached out to Bones and after signing the contract, offered him another undefeated prospect on a winning streak in the face of the Brazilian Andre Guzmão. The official start of Jones' career inside the world's best league happened on August the 9th at UFC 87. Speaking about the fight, we will not beat around the bush and just say it up straight. The future champion of the division showed all of his best traits and convincingly secured the spot in the organization. He beat the Brazilian via unanimous decision. At a recent podcast, Jones remembers his thoughts before the first performance and shared some details of his preparation prior to the tournament. Andre, uh, he was trained under the Gracies in Jiu Jitsu. He was a black belt and capoeira, which was, you know, rare in our country. Yeah. Um, but he also was trained with, uh, I believe he trained with Roger or Jeff Mayweather for a while and all this stuff. He had all these credentials. Mm -hmm. And um, I was really intimidated by it because I was training at the time and my buddy's farm and he had like a tin barn in the back of his farm. And I was training in, literally on a farm. Yeah. At, for my UFC debut and this guy had all the glitz and glam it was like Rocky versus Drago this guy was Drago he had it all 
and I was able to beat him by unanimous decision. And I looked at myself as this, this punk ass kid from upstate New York. And I had just beat a UFC fighter, like a real UFC fighter at my first fight. He was five and oh, and, he him. Uh, yep. And here's Jones' recent reaction to the fight many years later. Ah, uh, man, UFC 87, it was, the, it was the first time I met Rampage Jackson. Um, I remember uh, talking to my coaches and telling them, hey, you know, when I see these other fighters, I want to play it so cool, and I'm one of them now, I'm a UFC fighter now, and uh, I walk into a room like about a minute later, and Rampage Jackson was sitting to my hard right, and I wasn't expecting seeing him, and I just, I looked down and I was just like, Rampage, oh my God, I'm the biggest fan. I became the biggest fanboy. The next in Jones's way was a tough American with a record of 12 and four, Stefan Bonner. Fighters shared the octagon at UFC 94 on January the 31st of 2009. Fighting Stefan Bonner is definitely a win-win opportunity for me. You know, I'm a young guy in the sport. And one can't argue with that, at that time, Jones was very young compared to other guys, but that didn't stop him from beating an opponent by a unanimous decision. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I've realized that I've been blessed with a natural speed um, and doing some research and reading different um, theories and styles of martial arts. Uh, I picked up practicing fast and like, you know, just doing everything you do fast and not really focusing on being powerful. And uh, I think it's making me actually faster. So yeah, the speed is something I realized that I've been blessed with and, and I plan on executing in the future. The ninth professional fight of John took place in July at Anniversary Tournament UFC 100. He got Jake O'Brien as an opponent who until recently fought in the heavyweight class but then decided to move down and came into the fight with Jones on a record of 11 wins and 2 losses. Yeah, it's uh... It's just, you know, I have no way of putting it, but to say it's an absolute blessing. Um, you know, there's a lot of great fighters out there, a lot of guys who are much better than I am. And, you know, for the, for the fact, you know, that I have made this card is just, it's, a, it's an awesome thing. I'm so excited about it. Honestly, the first uh, memory of UFC was not really the UFC. It was that Pride video game. Uh, yeah, that was my first exposure to mixed martial arts. Uh, I remember playing with the Wendell Silva character and I thought he was just so vicious. And uh, yeah, that was my first taste of what mixed martial arts was and, and uh, you know, now I'm extremely passionate about it and I, I love it. Namely from this fight, Jones began a wide-scale campaign for the conquering of the fans' hearts and their loyalty. Beautiful spinning elbows, extremely confident demeanor in every situation and a true versatility. It's a fraction of what the prospect began to showcase inside the octagon. And all this action ended in the middle of the second round via guillotine submission. I remember, what I remember most about UFC 100 was the pressure. Um, I had just beaten Stefan Bonner in the fight before and uh, I was officially like on the mat and everyone was excited to see more out of me and I remember just having too much pressure at so, so young in my career uh, to follow up that Stephen Bonner performance so I, I fought Jake O'Brien and just I just remember having a lot of pressure on me to, to fight the way I did against Bonner against O'Brien. Um, one of the things that meant most to me uh, was proving to myself that I could out wrestle uh, Jake, because Jake had wrestled Division One, he went to I think Purdue, and I was just a junior college kid. And I've always had a chip on my shoulder about the wrestling thing because I had to drop out of school. Um, I never got to go D1, so anytime it was time for me to fight a better wrestler, you know, I, I just always felt like I had so much to prove. So that's where it really started. And sure enough, I out wrestled Jake O'Brien. I stopped all of his takedowns and ended up choking him out in a wrestling position. So those are the things I remember most, just the pressure, um, outperforming myself and, and the pressure of out wrestling a guy who did something I never got to do, which was, you know, compete at the highest level. The next bout is that very fight featuring Bones that resulted in his defeat. Surprised? As we are, to be honest. Anyway, by December of 2009, an undefeated prospect on a streak of nine victories continued to climb the rankings in the division. In the finale of the 10th season of the Ultimate Fighter Show, he was up against a guy named Matt Hamill. 
And that's the only thing we need to know about this guy. This fight has the potential to be an absolute battle, an all-out slugfest. But I'm looking to get in there and get out, get that first round knockout. Tonight is just a big opportunity for me to shock the world. Uh, I want to show everyone what I could do and give them a devastating knockout. This bout did not even last a round. It was over in 4 minutes and 14 seconds. For this whole time, Jones was mercilessly beating his opponent up and moving towards an early victory. But one single mistake changed everything. An illegal 12-6 elbow. Steve Mazzagatti, who refereed that fight, immediately stopped the action and gave Bones an upsetting defeat via disqualification. Subsequently, the UFC president Dana White spent a long time trying to overturn the final outcome. And the last time he made a request was in 2021, but unsuccessfully. Dan, who is the best in the world right now? Sidebar, pound for pound right now, who is the best fighter in the sport? It would have to be John Jones. I mean, realistically, it's John. John Jones has never, you look at all the people that he's fought, he's never lost a fight. It, it kills me that that one is on his record, 26 and one. You have to understand, for the people that don't know, this was during a time when the Nevada State Athletic Commission was very weak. And there was a, 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 a referee in there that stopped the fight and called Jones the loser in that fight. Um, a fight he was dominating and, and should have been finished. Instead of, you know, disqualifying Jones, they should have stopped the fight. And Jones right now really should be 27 and up. I fought hard to try to get that one taken off his record, but, you know, it, I haven't been able to get it done. It's just, it's, it's horrible. It's a referee that I said a million times should not even be in the octagon reffing. And here's the reaction of John himself right after the announcement of his disqualification. I feel great. <laughs> I'm healthy, you know, I have no injuries. Could go and see my daughter, my girlfriend. I haven't seen them in so long. So, uh, I'm not worried about that, you know. Hopefully, uh, my manager can take care of all that stuff. Um, definitely took a lot of pride to be another B that I'm so you know, proud to be a martial artist and I strive so hard to be the best that I can be. But, um, you know, everything has for a reason. As time showed us, this incident did not have an impact on our hero. Very soon, three months later to be exact, Bones returned to the main octagon. On March the 21st of 2010, he collided with Filipino-American fighter Brandon Vera, who in his time held the championship of 1FC, WEC and had many other accolades. The fight took place in the main event of the local UFC live tournament. The reason why I think I'm, you know, talked about a lot is just my style. You know, it's really exciting. I know that it's a spectator sport. I give them what they want to see and you know, keep the crowd wild. My style is definitely really wild and, and random at times, but it's a it's a planned attack. You know, these moves have been trained several times. You know, Brandon being a striker, I'm excited. You know, we're both um, good strikers. Well, you know, me and Brandon, you know, we're both known to have really dynamic styles. The biggest difference is between me and Brandon, you know, I'm not going to win my first UFC fight and go calling out Chuck Liddell. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very humble and I realize that there's a lot I need to work on. Yeah, I'm just going to go out there and pull the trigger. If, if anything comes to me, I'm not going to hesitate to take it. So, uh, you know, just expect everything to happen. I think Brandon's really full of himself. You know, he said he's not impressed with my resume and he said that I'm all hype. Well, after this fight, I hope he will be impressed with my resume because his name's going to be on it. We don't know what Brandon Vera was thinking of, but we personally are under a very big impression. John Jones delivered another masterclass, super convincing performance, and earned the TKO victory in the very first round. I almost felt as if I knew him before I stepped in here with him. So uh, it was just hard work, a lot of dedication. I knew he'd be a step up in competition. And uh, you know, I trained to the point where I felt as if I won it before I got in here. I think that uh, potential is the biggest thing to waste and it's the, it's the worst thing to waste. And I'll make sure that doesn't happen. Next, Bones faced the Belarusian Vladimir Matyushchenko who was a former IFL light heavyweight champion. The fight happened on August the 1st in the main event of the same UFC Live. I don't think he's ever experienced a fighter like me. My goal is just to go out there and be something that he's never even seen before. I'm prepared to go out there, win this fight, and keep this rise going to the top. This is not my first time being in this situation. Matt Hamill. Jake O'Brien, the real pressure is on Vladimir Matyushchenko. He's the one who's fought against some of the best in the world. He's the one who's fought for titles. And uh, when I beat him, it's going to put a real stain on his record. 
Already back then, Matt Yushchenko was recognized as a respected veteran and a former title contender in the world's best league with a record of 24 and 4. But it did not bother Jones. After less than two minutes into the fight, it was all over via TKO in the prospect's favor. Um, you know, every, every opponent I have are really tough guys. And, um, and right now, you know, I'm like, I'm past these best, you know, playing college. So, no, I really don't want to sound arrogant, so I've got to be careful where I work this. But um, I want to find someone that's going to really, you know, give me a, a, a really tough test. And that has to be the champion or whoever, you know. I just I want to find someone who's supposed to be much better than me. Like someone that's not even close to that, supposed to be being as good. So I really try to step up and evolve to a different level. Six months later, the world's best league organized the fight between Bones and the winner of the eighth tough season on a record of 12 and 0. And the future Bellator champion who stopped Fedor Emelianenko twice, Ryan Bader. This fight took place at UFC 126. Ryan does qualify. He's undefeated. You know, he was a successful collegiate wrestler. He's beaten some veterans in our sport. Anytime you fight a guy who's undefeated, he has a confidence thing that's, that's behind him that you have to respect. So I have a big task at hand. I definitely feel as if this is going to be a good match. So Ryan's mentioning that he thinks that I'll cut down on my flashiness. That's what he's afraid of. So that's exactly what I'll probably give him the most. There's a lot of weird, unorthodox techniques that he's never seen, even in wrestling. Ooh, how do you beat him? Well, it's a lot of ways, um, but you know, it's, biggest thing for me is just to go out there and be free flowing. Um, you know, to flow like a river and stand like a mountain when it's time, and uh, and just be myself. You know, um, try to continue being a an unsolved puzzle, and uh, I think that's something I have on my advantage. The fact that every one of my fights have been completely different. I think he he's going to be really confused, and uh, I think I'm going to use my unpredictability in the wrestling category. Um, in the striking category, in the jiu-jitsu category, and every little small thing in between. So um, I'm excited, I'm very confident. I think that's half the battle, really truly believing that you're gonna do this. And, um, and I'm, I'm excited, you know. Um, you know, I feel as if I'm undefeated as well, and, um, and uh, I have a huge task. You know, fighting someone undefeated, it really, it wakes you up in the morning and it, uh, and it drives you to, to do that extra, and, and that's what it's done, so, so it's gonna be great. It's impossible to call the fight between John Jones and Ryan Bader a real rivalry. Bones was multiple levels above. He outstruck, outwrestled, and choked him out already in the second round by guillotine. That put the Americans suffering to an end. Such a convincing performance from a young athlete impressed the UFC bosses so much that in the post-fight interview, Joe Rogan surprised Bones with an offer that he couldn't refuse. The UFC wants to give you the opportunity to face Shogun Hua for the light heavyweight championship of the world. Let's do it! The Legendary Era Yes, as you already figured out, right after the victory over Ryan Bader, the UFC offered Jones a title opportunity. The young prospect from Rochester with a record of 12 wins and one so-called loss got the Brazilian killer from pride at 23 years of age. Everything went so favorably for John as Rashad Evans, who initially was supposed to fight Mauricio, got injured. So the opportunity was given to the rising contender. Moreover, this event took place a month later in the main event of UFC 128. Right away, I just felt, wow, God is really good to me because there's so many people out there who's been training for, you know, 12, 13, 14 years and never made it this far. And here I am three years in, and I just got offered to fight for a world championship. When you have butterflies and you're feeling anxious and, and you have anxiety or, or nervous, um, that's when you're most powerful, I believe. Uh, you know, every day I'm learning how to become a better athlete. And, uh, you know, um, it, it feels pretty much the same, you know. Uh, you know, I feel as, as if I'm grown with, with the opportunity. Uh, when I was facing Andre Guzman, I didn't really have many tactics. Um, I was new to MMA, let alone the UFC. And uh, now I have a better grasp of what's going on, uh, both when it comes to media, when it comes to competition and, and everything. So um, I feel right at home, so I feel good. 
No, I don't, I don't feel overwhelmed. You know, I'm a hard worker, and uh, you know, I've dedicated my life to this sport completely. So, you know, when you work that hard and, and you do the right things, you have no reason to doubt yourself. So I feel as if I'm right where I deserve to be. I feel great. This is the biggest opportunity of my life, and uh, I'm definitely going to execute the situation. How can we describe this fight? I guess let's ask for help from Joe Rogan. John, I think was 22, right? As he mm -hmm. was when he won the title, 22. Okay, only been fighting the UFC for a s short amount of time. Opens the fight with a flying knee on a legend. Oh yeah, on a legend. You gotta have some balls. Just balls. You gotta have some balls. balls. Here it is. Boom. <laughs> that is so crazy to do. Opening seconds of the fight. But at the same time, you don't have no fear of the takedown. Well, he wasn't afraid of takedowns, and also yeah. he was very proficient at striking. Creative in the stand-up and skillfully on the ground is an absolute understatement. March 19th of 2011 marked the beginning of the new era in the light heavyweight division. John Jones stopped the Brazilian in the third round and became the youngest champion in UFC history. I thought it was crazy that this guy was a, a two and a half to one underdog, uh, but what happened was Bones Jones went out and proved that the hype is real. He really is that good, that gifted, and that talented. And we have a new light heavyweight champion. Greg Jackson has a style, and he calls it Daito Jitsu. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, Noki style of Jiu Jitsu that he formed uh, to protect himself in the hard streets of New Mexico growing up. And uh, he's taught me it. Um, I think he wants me to, to, to focus my game on keeping great positioning and raining down those GSP like elbows. So, uh, yeah, uh, my Jiu uh, Jiu Jitsu was coming along very strong. Um, I knew that I needed to focus on it to beat uh, such a well rounded fighter like Shogun. And, uh, and I'm glad I did focus on it. I want to say thank you to my, uh, my Jiu Jitsu trainer, my, my biggest uh, sparring partner on the ground, a guy named Igor. I forget his last name, but he's from Brazil and uh, he, he helped me out a lot. So God bless him. What's more interesting is that at the press conference after the fight, Bones shared the news that literally on the fight day, before attending the venue, the guy caught a thief and helped the locals. As the guy pulls us up in his car, he's like, uh, you know, I'm in the passenger seat, Greg Jackson and Winkle John's in the back seat. He's like, listen guys, before I drop you off here, I want to let you know this is a pretty bad neighborhood, so you might want to be careful. And I'm like, dude, we're at, you know, we're, we're all MMA guys. And he's like, uh, he's like, well, I'm just letting you know, a lot of people get mugged here. Just as he said that, I turned to pull off my seatbelt and the guy, um, I see an old uh, Spanish couple like screaming and they're like running. They look like they're out of breath big time. And I'm like, dude, they just got mugged. And he's like, uh, no, no. And I'm like, maybe not. I'm tripping. You just put that in my mind. Um, so Mike Wingochan hops out of the car and he's like, you guys OK? And then she's like, you know, the guy just he just <clears throat> he just broke my window open. He took all my stuff and he's running. And uh, he looks back and he usually sees me, you know, 6'4". You got Greg and Wink like yeah, behind us. Here. Yeah, Greg and Wink's behind me and I'm just running like, you know I'm gonna catch you, right? <laughs> so, uh, so the guy looks back and then he trips over his own foot. And so at the time he tripped over his own uh, foot, I got so scared because I didn't know what I was gonna do when I actually caught him. So I actually like started barking like, ah, I'm gonna get you like, ah. After a sensational victory in the title fight, we'll remind you again, just in case, John Jones became the new UFC light heavyweight champion. His first defense was against the American fighter who was a former champion of the world's best league during the unification of Pride and UFC belts. And now the organization gave him another chance after two victories via unanimous decisions over Mark Hamill and Lyoto Machida. Moreover, it was a chance for Bones to face his idol, which he already told us about. The fighters shared the cage in the main event of UFC 135. Well, I'm glad John Jones underestimated me. Yeah, he'd be uh, very surprised come Saturday. Garth, I thought it was funny you asked that question because I'm positive that I've never stated that uh, Rampage doesn't have the tools to beat me. I've never, never stated that in any of my interviews leading up to this fight. Um, and I'm not underestimating Rampage at all. I mean, he's a unified champion who's knocked out some of the best fighters in the sport. That would be a very, very ignorant thing for me to do to underestimate somebody with such a great record and such a great status. Well, you know, um, John is a, uh, he's very unique with a lot of stuff he does, but you know, um, I, and he's a great wrestler, but I fought great wrestlers and 
and his stand up is okay. And I and I fought great stand up guys. I fought a tall guy in K1 with with longer reach than me, and Chuck Dale had longer reach. And um, I don't I don't really think his jiu-jitsu skills is, is um, extraordinary. So I'm ready for everything. You know, he, he's a um, creative kid, but I'm I prepare for everything. So I'm just I'm just be, I just be happy to get in there Saturday and, and get ready for the fight. I think a big part of of uh of getting knocked out, it, it comes more and more with the older guys in the sport. Uh, no offense to any of them, but you know it's just the way the human brain works and the body works. Um, at the accumulation of hits throughout your career, uh, your ability to take punches start to go away slowly but surely. Um, and I'm in the beginning of my career. You know, I'm a 24 year old guy, still growing pubic hair, and uh, <laughs> and I, I think I have a very fresh. The main event of UFC 135 once again presented Bones in a new light. Despite the young age, he fought like a veteran who went through many wars in the main octagon. And despite the challenges that he had to overcome, the end of the fight came in the first minute of the fourth round. Bones managed to take his opponent down, take his back and defend his championship by executing a submission choke. You gotta, you gotta believe that you can do things before you can do it, and, and I just had belief, and I was, you know, just trying to be a testament to people and to, to athletes and kids that, you know, you gotta set your mind to goals, and, and that's the only way you can achieve them. The first successful title defense in the same dominant fashion brought a lot of new and exciting things in John's life. But first of all, of course, money and recognition from the community. The UFC targeted the next appearance of the young talent at the end of 2011 at the 140th event. Across from Bones was supposed to be Rashad Evans, but due to a thumb injury, this bout had to be postponed. To be exact, the veteran was put on the sidelines so he can heal up. While John still entered the octagon on December 10th, but his opponent was a legendary Lyoto Mashida. Lyoto's a great opponent, man. He's game. I think he takes the sport seriously. He's unpredictable. He's fast. Leota loves distance, and I love distance. But I have the longer limbs, and I believe I'm just as fast. So if Leota wants to play the distance game with me, I think that's going to be awesome. Um, where I feel like my biggest advantage will be uh, is my youth and versatility and the way that I approach the sport. Uh, yeah, it was really difficult to find training partners. I actually didn't find uh, any training partners that can fight like Leo Machida. But well, most of my teammates can fight Southpaw, and that was good enough for me. You know, I really focus on my style. I think I'm pretty different, and, uh, and that's what I focus on. Are you scared to use, lose your title? Uh, no, not at all, buddy. You know, it's, it's a risk we take, but um, with every great risk, there's great reward. The second title defense in the light heavyweight division came to fruition closer to the end of the second round. He pressed Machida to the fence, tightly grabbed his neck and choked him out with a guillotine for the first time in the Brazilian's career. I think it's safe to say it's the toughest fight since I've learned how to fight. You know, my UFC debut was pretty tough only because I was actually engaged in a really tough fight and I didn't really have tactics or have philosophy. Um, now I have tactics, I have philosophy. I feel as if I'm a seasoned fighter, I know what I'm doing. Um, and I still went through a, a pretty strong, uh, strong fight. So I, I think it's safe to say that it's the toughest fight since I've known how to fight. Finally, after the victory over Lyoto Machida, the stars aligned in favor of John Jones fighting his main opponent and a teammate, Rashad Evans. The set clash took place at UFC 145 in the main event of the evening. I mean, it's, you know, um, I think my, my cardio uh, will be a huge advantage. You know, I, I haven't gotten tired and, uh, uh, in any of my fights except for the Stephen Bonner fight. Uh, so my cardio will be a big advantage, I think. And uh, just, you know, I think we're equal in speed, honestly, with hands and especially kicks. Um, you know, very, very equal in speed. I think uh, wrestling is going to be awesome to see. Um, I've been working very extensively with my wrestling. and. I feel good. I think his, any advantage he may have, it, it could possibly be in the grappling department. I don't know. It used to be in the grappling department, uh, but we'll have to see uh, how far my improvements have taken me. Uh, you know, I don't think I've ever said that, that I value the belt, but I definitely value uh, being, considered, being considered the best. And, um, you know, being considered the best is my passion. It, it's, it's what I'm fighting for. It's, it's what my life is about. And, um, you know, so uh, having Rashad Evans as an opponent, you know, it has nothing to do with uh, uh, you know wanting to be great and wanting to be the best 
you know, I'll have the same feeling uh, in my next fight that I have right now. You know, it's it's truly not personal with me. You know, there's a lot of things that that has, have been said that was personal, but but when it comes to the actual game, you know, it's still a game that we play, and it's, just, it's another game. You know, the pre-fight hype and all that it has nothing to do with the game. I'm a completely different fighter since the time he held me down in practice. It's just night and day. He's truly picking up a fight with my past. I think when he gets out there, he's going to realize that there's different combinations, there's different size, strength, and there's a whole different kid out there that he's against. You know, I don't respect John as a person. I think John is fake just by even sitting here and saying that this is not going to be personal. Of course this is personal. He want to smash me as bad as I want to smash him. A lot of my mentors have been talking to me and saying, you know, John, don't let him get into your head. But the truth of the matter is, he is in my head, and I want him in my head. I like him in my head. You know, that's when I train better. That's when I focus more. That's when I study his fights more. Jones's fight with his teammate went the full distance and was left in the judges' hands. They gave crushing scorecards of 49 to 46 and 50 to 45 in favor of the undisputed champion. The third title defense is successfully earned. Oh man, it means a lot to me. Uh, Shad Evans is a great opponent, and uh, you know I definitely answered a lot of questions in my own game. Uh, you know, uh, it's my first five-round fight, and uh, felt like my cardio wasn't an issue. Um, just maybe it was an issue. I don't know. I don't know. But you know, Rashad's tough, man. He has very, very fast hands, extremely fast hands. And then uh, on top of the hands, you got to worry about the double leg type threat the whole time. So. You know, Rashad, he's definitely a lion. He's 100% a lion, and to defeat a lion, you know, by unanimous decision, uh, it's, a, it's a major confidence booster, and uh, it's very reassuring. At the post-fight press conference, Dana White instantly announced the news that the next opponent of the young champion will be another dangerous veteran, Dan Henderson. It was initially planned that John Jones would share the cage with H-bomb possessor at UFC 151, closer to the middle of the summer, but the plans changed prior to the tournament due to the contender's injury. The organization started searching for a replacement and such happened to be Chow Sonnen who accepted the fight on short notice with no hesitation. But John didn't want to accept this fight after consulting with his coach. Subsequently, the UFC 151 tournament was cancelled. Later, it was stated that Henderson got an injury three weeks prior to the event but he kept it a secret as he still wanted to perform. But he ultimately had to pull out of the fight after the final sparring where his condition was examined and he wasn't allowed to enter the cage. Bones' decision to reject the fight with Chow Sonnen was criticized. In 19 years of the promotion's history, it was the first time when the tournament had to be completely cancelled. Later, the company's president expressed a clear disapproval of Jones' decision but nothing could be done about it. When the situation cleared out, the world's best league set the rematch between John and Lyoto Machida, which was targeted for September 22nd, UFC 152. It seemed that this time it would be smooth sailing, but nothing of the sort. The Brazilians team stated that they would not take this fight due to a lack of time for preparation. And finally, none other than the phenom Vita Belfort stepped into the game. No, I really wasn't too worried about Chael Sonnen. You know, Chael Sonnen is a guy who I think his MMA record right now is six and five or something like that, which is just over 500. You know, but at the same time, this is a sport where um, if you could possibly lose a game, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, you got it outscored in the game of basketball, you know. This is a sport where if you're not prepared, you know, anything can happen. You know, we wear four ounce gloves and, uh, you know, anything can happen. So I like to give myself the best odds as the CEO of my brand uh, to be successful. And uh, that's, you know, having a, a proper, a training camp. I think, well, I would say the mixture between speed and power, but you know, Lyoto actually has speed and power. Yeah, as you saw with this knockout over uh, Ryan Bader in his last fight, man, that was a fast punch and it was very powerful. So I can't really say that he has that much that I haven't seen before. Lyoto was also a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. I fought in lots of black belts. Um, Rampage was a great puncher. Vitor is a great puncher. Vitor punches a little more straight, but he, he has some hooks and a, you know, a decent high kick. Um, you know, I can't really say he, he has a skill set that I haven't seen before, uh, but, you know, he's a different animal, different timing, different rhythm, uh, different person. So, you know, it'll, it'll be a great challenge for sure. I'm a guy who really prides myself in having great cardio and, and having, you know, um, a solid game plans and really knowing what I'm getting into. 
and um, I went into that Dan Henderson fight 100% prepared to go through a grueling five rounds if it went that way. And having the fight cancel, you know, I definitely had to switch up a lot of different things that I was working, like angles and boxing and, and plans of attack and things like that. Um, but one thing that's gotten to happen is um, where my body fat was already low and my cardio was already really good, um, giving myself a four week bonus of training time, uh, I think has really pushed me to a different level in the martial artist that I am. So, you know, I, right now I feel faster than ever. I, I feel quicker than ever. As history taught us, this fight happened to be another triumph in the light heavyweight division for John Jones. Despite the adversity in the beginning rounds, Bones did everything in his power to stop the veteran at the start of the fourth round by submission and tied with Chuck Liddell in a number of title defenses in the division. I just remember going into the second round, um, thanking God that, that I had gotten out of that armbar and also thanking God for the adversity. You know, it was like um, I worked so hard on my cardio this time. So, you know, I think when you're out of shape, it creates like frustration and confusion in there but when you can breathe clearly, you think really clearly. And uh, I honestly thank God when I sat down for having a hurt, having a hurt arm, uh, just to prove to myself and prove to my coaches that all the speeches and all the stories that they tell me about warriors, um, just to be able to prove uh, that I can be a warrior as well. So I was, I was grateful uh, to be able to come back from something. After another successful performance from the champion, the MMA community split in two camps. Some thought that Jones' next opponent has to be Dan Henderson, while others argued in favor of Chow Sonnen, who was quite popular among the fans and thanks to his signature trash talk, he masterfully moved to the very top positions. As you know, the luck turned in favor of the West Lynn native. Even more so, Chael and John were given an opportunity to coach the 17th season of the Ultimate Fighter Show, and their fight was targeted right at the end of April 2013, UFC 159. Can I hear the real story? I got a call from Dana. He said, listen Chael, I'm putting you to work. He said, I overpaid for this light heavy who I now realize is a jerk. I could take John Jones down anytime I wanted to. I'm a two-time national champion. I got a silver medal from the world championships. That says I can take John Jones down. So what I say, John, is you run into another tree. Do whatever it takes to stay away, son, because you don't want to fight me. Joe, I don't promote fights. I pick fights. I'm better than John Jones. I'm better than Sean Combs. I am even better than John Holmes. John Holmes is a dead junkie, and Sean Combs is like a rapper. Is that the other guy? Don't bring up old business. The course is current events. FX Ultimate Fighter just before Justified Tuesday night. Oh yes, Sonnen did not shy away from using his main weapons even against the super dangerous and young bones. So if you think John and Anderson are even close, I will run through John because I ran through Anderson. Now I don't think they're close. I think John is considerably uh, better than Anderson. But, but uh, you know, sometimes I hear that I, I don't deserve this fight or I'm not the right guy, but then I hear that Anderson could beat him. But, well, you got to be kidding me. I stopped Anderson Silva twice. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of ways to beat him. Um, taking him down and beating him up is, is a good strategy, but uh, that's not the only way to win this fight. The response of the undisputed light heavyweight champion to all these insults and impudence was unreserved as always. You know, Chell's crazy, so it doesn't count. It's like, you know, like a, Chell, Chell's a gentleman. Uh, he's this promoter, this ruthless, disrespectful, say anything about any one promoter, which is, I'm not really sure if I agree with that. Um, and then he is a, uh, he's a tactical fighter. And I take the gentleman seriously when we're talking, you know, I, I can look him in the eyes like on the show. You know, he was being chill, the gentleman, so, I, and then I take the fighter very seriously. When I see veins popping out of his neck, I'm like, oh, he's getting warmed up. Let me just turn this off, turn the channel. So I don't, I don't take the crazy statement maker chill serious. Sure, the champion was dominating the contender for almost the entire first round. And with one minute and a half left, the fight was over because of TKO in John's favor. But during that time, there was one event that almost led to Bones' defeat. It happened in one of the moments when Jones was pushing against the canvas with his feet and his left toe abruptly turned sideways because of a fracture. I hope you understand why we can't show this footage. 
In the heat of the moment, the guy didn't feel that and won before the end of the first round. But if this fight went to the second round and it would be known that Bones got injured, the victory would be given to Chow Sonnen on top of the championship. You are a true champion, my friend, for even attempting to make this interview work while you're dealing with a, a, one of the nastiest foot injuries I've ever seen. Congratulations to you, sir. You are still the UFC light heavyweight champion and one of the baddest men on the planet, John Jones, ladies and gentlemen. But either way, that victory happened to be Bones' fifth title defense, which allowed him to tie with Tito Ortiz in the light heavyweight division. You know, it's, it's awesome. You know, the last time I was here, I had all these goals and admirations of becoming a, a champion. And now I'm here in the same building um, uh, as one of, the, uh, one of the best champions. And uh, you know, first and foremost, I want to say thank you to Tito Ortiz for uh, what he's done in the past. Um, you know, paving the way for young guys like me to want to inspire to be like. Well, not, I won't say be like. <laughs> no, <thank God. laughs> but you know, Ty, uh, you know, Ty's record and everything. Tito's a great guy and I respect him a lot. So hats off to Tito Ortiz for being such a great champion for me to follow. Yes, you already know which rivalry we will talk about next. The battle between John Jones and Alexander Gustafsson made a great contribution to the UFC's development and industry in particular. At those times when Bones was consistently making a walk to the octagon and superseded every fighter at their own game, the community began to raise an obvious question. What will happen if the champion faces the fighter who is not inferior in terms of height and anthropometry? On September 21st of 2013, the world's best league answered that question by organizing a title fight between the Swede and Bones in the main event of UFC 165. At that moment, Gustafsson was on a streak of six victories and lost only once in his entire career. While for Jones, it was a sixth title defense and he also had a defeat on his record, but in his case, due to a disqualification. I'm super excited. It's a dream fight for me and uh, you know, I'm super motivated. I've never been this motivated in my life, you know, and you know, <clears throat> all the hours I put in the gym just for this fight and now this, it's in my reach, so you know, I, I'm ready to go. I will say, you know, his height and his reach, his arms and legs, you know, it's going to be different, you know, a little bit different distancing and uh, it will require me to have a little different timing. I want to beat him to the punch a little faster because his arms are a little longer. Um, so, yeah, just you know, a little range differences. John is the kind of guy that you never know what to expect. You know, he's an unpredictable guy. He has a belt for a reason. He's pound for pound best guy in the world. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to go in there with an open minded. I'll be flexible and, you know, I'll be just going and fight. Absolutely, you know, the way he holds his hands, the way he steps, uh, what, is, what his opponents are doing, um, his vulnerabilities, his go-to offense moves. Yeah, we pay attention to every little detail. In the first fight with Alexander Gustafsson, the champion for the first time faced difficulties which almost cost him the championship. Thanks to identical physical attributes, the Swede managed to surprise Jones for a while, but closer to the final rounds, he slowed down and lost via unanimous decision. Still the undisputed UFC light heavyweight champion of the world! Man, I tell you what, I've been asking for a dog fight for a long time, and I finally got that dog fight I've been looking for. Tonight was a blessing in so many ways. Got the victory, and I got to prove a lot to myself. I'm not satisfied, I gotta do a lot more work in the gym to stay on top of my game. So you wanna know what a good fight that was? Neither the champ or the, or the uh, challenger will be here. They're both, Jones is already at the hospital and they're taking Gustafsson right now to the hospital. After the hardest fight in his professional career, the champion took a little bit of time to recover. Sure, the rematch with the Swede was up in the air and the world's best league was not really against the second fight between Bones and the Mauler, but they decided to give the title shot to another contender right from May the 26th of 2012, when another tough Brazilian, Glover Teixeira, arrived in the organization. Everybody expected that very soon he would share the octagon with their young champion, John Jones. After the legendary veteran racked up a streak of five victories, we saw the announcement of the upcoming event. 
It happened on April the 26th of 2014 in the main event of UFC 172. Sure, Glover has already tasted defeat before, but it was too long ago and didn't really matter. He was on a streak of 20 victories, five of which were earned in the UFC. On paper, this rivalry was quite exciting and it was clear why. Because it was already a seventh title defense for Bones and many were simply wondering, who can stop this guy? Just got grills bumps right now when you say 48 hours, man. I was like, uh, sometimes like I can't believe that's that close. And uh, it's just great, man. I'm excited, you know, I'm, uh, I'm ready to go. I did everything, it was perfect and I'm ready to go, man. For true martial arts fans, they know how big of a challenge I have ahead of me. Um, me and my coaching staff, we know how big of a challenge Glover is going to be. He, um, he's, he's a mean dude. Well, the, my style is already close in the distance, so uh, um, I think I'm going to go forward and close it. I mean, I'm, uh, i I done this for all my fights, so uh, I know John Jones, he have that, that ability. I mean, the, the ability to keep the guys away, but uh, I just got to be use the speed and getting in sight and, and hit him, you know, we got to deal with the, when you're a champ, you have to prove I'm a champ, I have to deal with that, so. I'm not overlooking him at all. Like I said, uh, he is a phenomenal athlete. I mean, he really is. Um, he's a winner. I'm a winner. And uh, we know, we know how big of a challenge this could be. Even though initially the stakes were very high, when it came down to action in the octagon, the undisputed champion in the face of Bones did not leave his opponent any chances. He dismantled the Brazilian to small pieces and beat him with a huge advantage and defended his championship for the seventh time. Thus, we witnessed another brilliant performance of John Jones. Uh, a lot of it was uh, improv. The, the game was to actually stick to takedowns and to uh, try to pick him apart from distance. Um, but I realized mid-fight that he was winding up on his punches and you can't really wind up when someone's right on top of you. So I switched the game plan up to go on extremely short range and uh, it worked out great. You know, I think it was one of the better, you know, I think I performed a lot better and dominated a lot better, but given who I was up against, I will, I will agree that that was a pretty solid performance. You know, being able to take those punches um, from Glover, being able to fight uh, an amazing boxer in the close range distance, um, proving to myself that I have a great chin not that I want to do that on a regular basis. I'm happy with it. Got to take him down several times. I don't think I've seen him take him down ever. So I'm happy. By the way, seven and a half years later, Glover managed to get another title fight and become the light heavyweight champion. It was in October of 2021, at the time when the MMA world was left hanging due to Jones's temporary break from the professional sport. But let's not get too far ahead. Well, let's get to the most interesting stuff. The next rivalry featuring John Jones was against one of the best fighters of the world's best league, Daniel Cormier. An uncompromising war between Bones and DC has become a classic of the promotion a long time ago and was inducted in the Hall of Fame of the best wars inside the UFC. On January the 3rd of 2015, they crossed paths in the main octagon for the first time. By that moment, Bones was looking to add an 8th title defense to his resume. While Cormier was yet to taste the defeat and had an overall record of 15 victories, 4 of which were earned in the major organization. Sure, the bosses of the promotion did not give up on the idea of the rematch between Jones and Gustafsson, but the Swede was recovering from his meniscus injury and was forced to step aside for an unknown period of time. And there it was, in the beginning of 2015 at UFC 182, matchmakers put these guys against each other. It's worth mentioning that things between Bones and DC began to heat up quite a while ago. In 2010, at the backstage of UFC 121, when Brock Lesnar fought Cain Velasquez, these two crossed paths and exchanged a couple of words. Back then, John already heard about the Olympic caliber wrestler in Cormier, who successfully competes in MMA and said to him that in case they have a fight, he could easily take him down and beat him if he wants to. And after their intense stare down that you already saw, the fighting world realized that something big is ahead. First time I got close to him, 
Uh, with John Jones, it's like I pushed him here, and it, it it was more malicious. It was a very the push was more malicious because of the the ill will and the hard feelings I have towards him, and his response showed how he feels towards me. So it doesn't matter what he says. He can say, "Well, it's not that big a deal. I think it's petty." It's a, that's not true. That's that's not true. You don't go and fight in that way in that situation, especially a guy that's so guarded. If you don't have real bad feelings towards someone, so yeah, I believe uh, 100% he, uh, he he dislikes me. I dislike him, you know. I, I also don't consider Daniel to be the the biggest uh, heavyweight or the biggest light heavyweight. I mean, come fight night, I think you'll see the the size and the strength difference uh, in us. So um, I train against heavyweights all the time. I, I tend to do pretty good. I'm very confident in my ability to compete at heavyweight. Uh, but my goals are all at light heavyweight division. I'm really trying to catch up to, to uh, some of the greatest fighters of all times, guys like Anderson and, and uh, GSP. And um, I feel as if winning as many championships as I can in the light heavyweight division is what I need to do to really solidify a, a magnificent legacy. A threat, you know, uh, John, you know, he was, a, he was a great scholastic wrestler. I was coaching when he was in high school, so I was very aware of who he was you know I know he can wrestle I mean I've seen him out wrestle guys in MMA um, I'm gonna work on my entire game you know I never I never focus on one individual area I always find confidence in my in my gym in my training partners uh, knowing that they're gonna prepare me for anything that he can bring to the cage you know uh, I, I am so happy he's gonna try and get a takedown because I can defend takedowns and he's gonna get his ass taken down and he won't get up he's gonna be stuck there I'm not gonna knock him out. <laughs> he has to stay. He has to stay in there for 25 minutes and take his beating. Mm. All right. He has, he has to stay in there and take his beating. So I'm not gonna knock him out. <laughs> he's going to. He's going to stay in there and take his beating. There is nothing you can do to stop me from coming at you round after round with the most malicious techniques I know. You will lose this fight, Daniel Cormier. I want you to believe it. Every ounce of training you put in leading up to this fight will be a waste of your life. And knowing that he would have probably come at me, I, I would have probably smacked him upside of his head instead of just pushing him away from me. I believe that when we get into that cage, John Jones is gonna walk there with his title. I'm gonna start pulling that, that man's title for the first two rounds and he'll hold on to it. But right around the third round, fourth round, John will open his hands let his grip go and say, Daniel, take it. This is too hard. I don't want to deal with it. I'm going to push that man to a place that he's never been in his entire life. And I will make John Jones quit. Sunday morning, Joe Rogan, you will wake up and you will say, how Daniel make this look so easy? What an impressive exchange of trash, right? And that's just before their first fight, which, by the way, is directly related to the action inside the octagon. Bones took a convincing victory via unanimous decision. Or more so, he became the first man who managed to take the Olympic wrestler down. Back then, many thought that Cormier lost because he hated his opponent too much, while the champion approached this rivalry with a cold heart. I don't know how to judge a fight, so, you know, I know I lost, and um, John won. That's pretty much all it boils down to. It doesn't matter if it's closer or if it's, if it's, uh, if it's, if it's not, you know, he won the fight. Yeah, I thought he had a very good performance out there tonight. Absolutely. Um, you know, my lips swollen, my eyes fat. Um, it was a five-round fight. Um, it was entertaining. You know, he had some great flurries in there. And as an athlete, how can you not respect a guy like that? Before we dive into the darkest part of John Jones' story, we suggest you watch the following interview that a couple of years ago presented this guy from a little bit of a different angle in the eyes of the fans and public. So I have this, I'm going to share something with, I'm not sure if I've ever shared this with anyone else before, but I had this crazy thing that I would do um, where I would party one week before every fight. And I did it throughout my whole career. And, uh, and this was stupid, but it was this mental crutch that I had. I literally would, one week before every fight, I would go out and I would get blacked out wasted. <laughs> and my logic was, if this guy were to beat me somehow, um, I, I can look myself in the mirror and say that, well, I lost because I got hammered the week before the fight. Now, let's get to the main thing. The Dark Side of John Jones. 
Now, as a wave of chaos broke out late last night in downtown, well-known UFC fighter John Bones Jones stepped in to confront some of the vandals. Here's News 13's Gabrielle Burkhart. So I do have to place you under arrest for DWI, okay? Yes, sir. Say your name publicly. Say it. Garrett what? John. Officer Nerd. Calm Garrett. down, bro. You heard me in my whole damn night. Just because I'm big and black. And what did I do? All these officers. What did I do? We'll be honest, we spent a long time thinking of how to name this segment and how to approach it. That thing that we universally recognize as the dark side of the greatest fighter of all time, which at the same time shows the controversy of his character, the fans began to notice it right at the beginning of his rivalry with Daniel Cormier. Hey, p are you still there? I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. You were just the fakest person. I actually admire that you can actually be this fake in like when the TV comes on, how you can just change. It's like you're a chameleon. I'm doing my work. See, I'm just being a professional. There it is. Oh. There it is. How rude. Live <laughs> on pay-per-view. How you. rude, John. <laughs> what? I mean, how rude, John. Hey, hey, Joe, listen. The guy has a job commentating for a reason. But we're talking about a little bit of a different stuff here. The following narration will not be very different from what we talked about previously. However, we have to break the chronology of the events to put all of John's controversies in order. We hope for your understanding. On May the 23rd at UFC 187, matchmakers set up a fight between Bones and Anthony Johnson. There is footage on the internet from the press conference where fighters pranked Dana White and rattled his nerves. However, in April, Bones decided to have a ride in a rented car and his trip wasn't really that good, to say the least. The champion of the world's best league passed on the red light, hit two vehicles and crashed his own car in the process. In one of the cars was a pregnant woman that got hurt and broke her hand. In the end, Jones fled the scene with a pack of money, according to the eyewitnesses, but left the pipe with drug substances in the car. This time, he had to take rap for what he did. The fighter was sentenced to one and a half years of probation under supervision, but he avoided a real sentence and criminal case. The guy agreed to do charity and swore to never break the law again. Jones was stripped of the title and was replaced with Daniel Cormier for the set tournament, who beat Rumble and became the new light heavyweight champion. Joe Rogan, no disrespect to you or the 16,000 people in this arena, but I have a message for one man. John Jones, get your together, I'm waiting for you! As for Bones, nobody heard from him for a quite a while. Around half a year of radio silence after the suspension and the accident, only on October the 23rd, the organization's representatives announced that the guy got reinstated on the roster and was actively preparing for his return. There weren't any details on the internet about his next opponent, only guesses and speculations. In November, there was an hour-long interview in which John shared his thoughts on what happened. In a way, I'm grateful because I get to, um, I get to, I get to recognize my mistakes. I get to assess what's made me, um, you know, not necessarily the best that role model. I get to, you know, assess that and. And I get to alter that. Uh, and then I get an opportunity to go back into the game and do things better, uh, become you know, a better role model and a better athlete. You know, it's like, it's like I got to retire almost and like, like get back in the game still young enough, fresh enough to, to uh, have some serious, um, you know, have a serious future, serious longevity. So yeah, it, it's great to, to have this awakening um, but still be in my physical prime to actually go back and do something about some of the things that I've let myself down on in the past. A long-anticipated rematch between Bones and DC was supposed to take place at UFC 197 April 23rd of 2016, as Jones' suspension period came to an end. But it wasn't all that simple. By the irony of fate, on April the 1st, Cormier refused to perform at the tournament, referring to his foot injury. Then the interim title came into play, and Daniel Cormier was replaced with Ovince St. Preux. Man, it feels so great to be back. I've missed this game so much. Um, 
just feel alive, man. I feel like, you know, my life's getting back in order and, and, uh, and I'm just extremely grateful to be back here on this platform. Nothing compares to being back here, uh, even doing this interview right now, having the fans excited, you know, reading all the tweets and the Instagrams of good luck, you know, all the people around the world who just can't wait to see it, getting in shape, you know, being extremely healthy, eating healthy, you know, all the techniques are here, are coming back, you know, like just being an elite athlete, you know, it just feels, uh, it feels amazing. I feel so alive. Uh, I feel like everything in the universe is right. And, you know, I guess to put the cherry on top, of all these great emotions that I'm experiencing, it's just to have that belt around my waist. So I feel complete and uh, never been happier. With all due respect to each and every athlete, St. Pru happened to be just another tick in the box and a stepping stone for Bones, who used him to get to the previous position. 50 to 44, 50 to 45, and 50 to 45, indisputable, convincing, and unanimous decision the interim light heavyweight champion. Coming in here and I was just trying to be as, as confident as possible, um, but I, I really needed that. I really needed that fight. Uh, like I said, I didn't look at Ogus as a warm-up fight because as you can see, he's definitely really game, but I needed that fight before fighting for my title. My next fight's gonna be a hell of a lot better, I guarantee it. I honestly, I thought I was gonna cry. I, I, like, I just felt so much power and positivity, you know, and like energy coming from the from the audience, you know, being looking at it from my eyes, you know, everyone had their camera phones on with the light on it, and it just looked like candles. And it was, the song had so much energy to it, and it was just like, I was just like, man, I just had to look around. It was just like, this is why I do it, you know. I almost forgot like how powerful it is to fight on fight night, you know. I just felt everybody's energy. And, I wish I can relive it. I wish I can fall asleep to it tonight. <laughs> when it seemed like the situation in the division finally settled down and came back to normal, the world's best league was quick to announce the news about the rematch. The second fight between Jones and Cormier was targeted for July the 9th at Anniversary UFC 200 event. I will die to beat you. Know that. Okay. Be prepared to do that. I wish they would let me next door so I could spit in your face. You know I would absolutely kill you if you ever did something like that, You right? could never, you could never kill me. Oh, I, I bet you I could. Then you should try, John. You really should try, John. No, I would literally kill you if you spit yeah, in my face. Yeah, let's try that, John. Literally kill you. Let's try that, John. Everybody couldn't wait for it. The tension was red hot, and every martial arts fans counted the days, waiting for this event to take place and the outcome of all this madness and principal rivalry. And that's what happened next. It was shocking. USADA suspended John Jones due to a possible violation and use of doping, with just a couple of days prior to the anniversary UFC tournament. Further investigation led to Jones being the first fighter in history who was stripped of the title twice. On top of that, the guy received a one-year suspension and was removed from the testing pool for the same period. I want to first uh, start by apologizing to to um, all the fans, all the fans who came out to support me for UFC 200. Yeah, I really, I really don't, really don't know what to say. I just, I'm really sorry about this happening. You know, the whole situation, uh, it really sucks. It really sucks. Um, really hurts a lot. Um, you know, supposedly they found something in one of my samples that I have no clue what it is. I, I don't even know how to pronounce it. You know, I just wanted to tell them I'm sorry. That's really it. 
you know, I, uh, I'm really glad, uh, I believe that something good will come from this. Since the start of another suspension, Cormier was not giving up hope for a rematch with Jones, but he wasn't willing to be left on the sidelines either. In total, Daniel complemented his resume with three more wins, two defenses against Gustafsson and Rumble, and a short notice title fight with Anderson Silva. And finally, the time has come. On July the 29th of 2017, the main event of UFC 214, Anaheim. Well, I mean, I think in time, uh, the result of, a, of one fight will not overcome everything I've done in this sport. But the reality is for me, I do need to win this fight because if you if you look at all the things that I've done in my career, uh, I've done it all outside of beating John Jones. It's the last thing for me to do. And yeah, it's very important. I need to win this fight on Saturday night uh, as much as anybody else sitting up here. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm at a pretty good place in my life, well, who I am. I, I just kind of learned not to give a f and it feels great. I'm very confident. My confidence has never wavered, and uh, I do feel good going into this rematch. But um, as I address these people in here, I say to you, guys, I've been sober. I haven't done all these things. I haven't wrecked my vehicle. I haven't been suspended. I didn't get stripped for my championship. I didn't do all those things. Guys, these are normal things that adult human beings do. You cheer this guy for saying he's not going to do these things anymore. I have done this my entire life, but you boo me. Thank you. Thank you. You know what happened behind the stage? He's a He's a He's a Dad. Are you back, you junkie? Got, hey, could you guys please help him out? Did he? Shut up. Right, what? Well, so like, I'm sitting here and like, I see him. Like, I see him. He's over there. But like, is he really gonna be? Is he really gonna be in Anaheim? Is this guy really gonna go to the fight? Is this guy gonna? Is this guy gonna mess this up again by doing steroids or snorting cocaine or? sandblasting prostitutes. What's this guy gonna do? What's this guy gonna do to mess this up this time? I don't care about your punishments. All I care about is you showing up on July 29th and you and I getting the fight again. That's all I've cared about for two and a half years. Don't do shit that compromises that and I have no issue with him. DC. Congratulations on getting back into the octagon, getting your life in order, but he's not getting the belt back. Thanks man, you haven't said that to me yet, thank you. To get to the actual overview of the event, we cannot help but mention the interview that happened more than three years ago and is directly related to the outcome of this rivalry. You're talking about the Josh Barnett fight, but... No. <laughs> see, so maybe we are on the same that, wavelength. Oh, that okay. will be figured out by September 27th. Okay. So don't think you're going to kick me in the head with your left leg. If some of you didn't get it, this interview with the media happened prior to the first fight between Bones and DC and curiously enough, already back then, DC and his team were suspecting which game plan Jones might utilize to get the victory. However, it seemed like they forgot about it prior to the rematch, which ultimately led to an unexpected outcome. And the outcome was that John had a glorious victory in his return. The middle of the third round, TKO caused by a flush high kick. That was the end of a legendary arc in the light heavyweight division between the best fighters of their time. 2-0 in Bones' favor. I don't know, man. I guess if you win both fights, there is no rivalry. So I, I don't know. Thank you for everything, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, we expected uh, to finish Daniel Cormier. I, I said it in several interviews before the fight. Um, there was a day in practice where uh, we found uh, five other guys who gives me the hardest time and uh, my coaches made me match up against all of them. They had one round each and five rounds and I finished uh, three out of the five which is something I've never been able to do before. I had two TKOs and a submission and my coaches told me after that practice they said John you are stepping into your prime my friend. And here are the comments of Daniel Cormier a couple of years later unbiased assessment, so to say, when he was already retired from the sport. The first time we fought, 2015, seven years ago, I'm 36 years old. Dude was like 24. Young man, tall, got all the physical gifts. He beats me. 
and get suspended for the first day. Next time, steroids, failed. Next time, steroids, failed. It's like every time we fight and you get suspended, if we go through the interaction and you win the fight, that memory does not disappear, right? right? Even though they say it's a no contest, like Channing said, we saw you lose it. I mean, yeah. it's the truth. Thank you, Daniel, for the spoilers, but we are not there yet. As soon as Jones scored a second victory over Cormier, he decided to hype up this event even more and called out none other than the Beast Incarnate. Brock Lesnar! If you want to know what it feels like to get your ass kicked by a guy who weighs 40 pounds less than you, meet me in the octagon. They have already met two years earlier, but it was a regular greeting at the backstage of one of the wrestling events in 2015. Hey, I'm here with Big Brad Lesnar right after the SmackDown. How you feeling, bro? Good, man. Good. That, was, that was a lot of fun. My first time getting to watch him do his thing, and he was a beast out there. The people loved him. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, good time. To many people's surprise, this idea was intriguing and well welcomed. Even Dana White himself couldn't stay on the sidelines, but clearly explained the way things are. Brock Lesnar just told the AP, be careful what you wish for, young man. Well, Brock Lesnar, first of all, you know, I haven't talked to Brock Lesnar. Um, even if he came back, you saw that he's got to wait six months uh, and, and be on the program for six months. So he'll fight somebody before that. I don't know who right here off the top of my head, but uh, he'll fight again. Uh, listen, I'm interested in whatever interests the, interest the fans. Uh, you know, uh, Brock Lesnar is always interesting. After UFC 214, the world's best league really started to work on this fight. It even reached the stage of negotiations, but at a certain point, on August the 22nd to be exact, things fell through because of an upsetting news that DC has already told us about. Jones failed another drug test which detected traces of Terinabol, anabolic steroid. Unfortunately, we couldn't ultimately see this matchup in the main octagon though the chances were really there. Moreover, the California State Athletic Commission officially overturned the result of this fight. John got stripped of the title again and it was given back to Cormier. In September, it was announced that the fighter was suspended for 15 months. I talked to Cormier on the phone. He was like, he tested positive again. Do you believe this shit? And they're gonna let him fight. I found out about it from Cormier. Some more time has passed. We, as the loyal fans, waited some time for the news that John is ready to come back. It happened on October the 10th of 2018. On top of that, we got treated with an additional fact. John would share the octagon with Alexander Gustafsson in a no less exciting rematch from 2013. Do you feel like the game has missed you? I feel, I feel like the game has missed me, but I also feel like they've had some uh, athletes to really keep them occupied. You know, Conor McGregor being the main guy. Right. Conor McGregor's done a great job of carrying the sport almost by himself mm. for a while. Yeah. Have you missed the game? I've missed the game tremendously. I appreciate the game more uh, now that I haven't had it. Yeah, for sure. And missed it a lot. When you get off of a, like, you had like one of the most spectacular fights with John Jones. I mean, down to the wire, like as, as close as it gets. And when you get out of a fight like that, where you almost won the title against the greatest of all time. Like, what is, what is that feeling like? And where do you go from there? Uh, I, I, you know, it was tough. It was really tough because, you know, everybody was saying, like, you're winning this fight, you're winning this fight. You had three rounds against him. Are like, you winning this fight? Like, it, it felt like, like you said, it was, on, it was just, it was just right there at the goal line. I, you know, I didn't really pass that goal line at all. Um, I just felt like, that uh, it, it was tough, it was tough. At that point, the Swede returned in the win column with two victories over Glover Teixeira and Jan Blakovic, while DC moved up in the heavyweight division to do some business with Stipe Miocic and the light heavyweight belt became vacant once again. The world's best league organized the rematch between the Mauler and Bones on December the 29th at UFC 232 delivering a new chapter in the rivalry which ended not on the most pleasant note in September of 2013. I'm his kryptonite. He doesn't like to fight me. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing something that he, he can't really handle. Well, you know, it, it's, it's, up to, it's, it's up to him whatever he, what he chooses to do and not to do. At the end of the day, 
it all comes down to who wants it more and 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 I'm just the guy. I'm just the guy for I'm, I'm the genre is over. The genre is over. I'm here to take over that. I'm here to take the belt and, and beat and beat him once and for all. Honestly my my feeling is no, I don't. I don't believe that. Nothing stays in the body for one and a half year. Come on man. Come on. And then it's only a pick gram of uh, I don't know what. Okay, but is it illegal? Yeah, it is. Yeah, but then, what the fuck was the? I mean, it's just, it's just uh, crazy when I hear John telling it on the stage, bam, bam. You know, it's just like I don't know. It's uh, end of the day. I'm just happy. I'm happy that we have the fight. It's on. I don't care if it's juice or not. I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it, put him on the mat and I'm gonna finish him. My thoughts are: I'm, I'm preparing for the best John out there on steroids. Yes, on steroids. If it's on steroids, I don't know. I think, you know, I think it's clean now. Honestly, I think it's clean now. Today, it's clean today. You know, it's clean, you know, for the, for the fight. But, you know, he had 10 weeks of camp behind him and whatsoever. But it's not, it's not going to affect me anyway. It's, you know, I'm, my mental is I'm prepared for the best guy out there. I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to, I'm just going to beat the crap out of him. That's, that's how I feel. I'm here to fight. That's it. I'm here to fight. Nothing else. Nothing less. Whatever this guy's saying, it's just bullshit. He's, he's just terrible, man. This guy is terrible, I'm telling you. He is terrible. This guy is not confident. He's not, he has to put shit in his body to be confident. That's how he is. What did what, you say about confidence? What did you say about confidence? I'm not confident. What are you saying? What You're not picture? confident. You're not what? confident at all. Why? You said a picture in my mind? You're not confident. Wait, 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 wait. You said a, a picture in my mind. What did you say? Just what did you say before that? I'm not confident. There's a picture in my mind that's not confident or something? No, I said you put shit in your body. That's why. You're not confident. I confident. put shit in my mind. You put shit what, in your so body. So what, what have I put in my mind? What have I said? Dude? In your Just, mind, in your body. You put shit in your body. Oh, I put shit in my body. That, yes, you do. That makes me confident. You're not confident at all. So I, I put a pictogram of a steroid in my body. And that that makes me well, whatever you're saying, whatever you're saying. You believe that I beat it won't help you this time, John. It won't help you this time. You believe that, huh? I believe that. Yeah. Of wow. Course. It's wow. illegal shit in your body. Wow. Illegal stuff in your body. It's oh like yeah. Some oh, no. it, what, no, what, what was found in my body is 100% on the ban list. 100. There you have it, guys. There you have it. And you honestly believe and it's still going down that I beat excuses, up. only excuses. That's all I hear. Nothing else. He's been drinking alcohol. He's been doing this and that, tons of excuses. Now he has to back it up. Let's see what you got. Here, I'm here. So, so I think he feels pressure and uh, he's nervous. This guy is a clown. You can see it right through him. So that's why I want to give him a beating. The worst ever. Who would have thought? But John Jones' approach to the rematches with Cormier's example clearly shows how thoroughly the guy prepares for the second fight with the same opponent. The Swedes suffered the same fate in every sense. Third round, second minute, knockout. A brilliant stoppage victory, triumphal return, and another light heavyweight championship. I'm disappointed, very disappointed, but uh, it's a sport and it's a fight, so we did our best there in, the, uh, in, in the octagon and, and this was the outcome, so I just have to, I just have to take it. Take it like a man. My dad said something interesting to me before he left the hotel room. He said, uh, he said, don't chase Gustafson tonight. People cheered last time whenever he would run away from me. And he said, don't chase him. Do not chase him, you know. And, and that really rung in my head in the locker room and things like that. Um, and so I, I changed it up and, and kind of Gustafson, Gustafson. I did the running, I did the backing away. Um, and it worked out. It worked out. I got to display my footwork. Tonight he was kind of plotty, marching forward the whole time. He kept saying he wanted to put pressure on me. Um, and, and I backed up and I made sure I scored points. And I kept him guessing, level changes, actual shots, kicks and punches. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe his, aggress his aggression worked against him. After all these terrible situations and incidents with suspensions, the true champion wanted to get back in there as soon as possible and prove with his deeds that he is ready to keep on carrying the torch he picked up a couple of years prior. A testament to that is the fact that John Jones's return to the cage happened three months later. His next title defense took place at UFC 235 on March the 2nd of 2019. And Bones' opponent happened to be Anthony Smith 
who at that time was on a streak of three stoppage wins. Going into this fight, March 2nd, this will be my 13th world title, and it means a lot to me. You know, I set out to be the most dominant mixed martial arts fighter of all time, and um, this is a, a big step on the journey in that direction. I think, you know, me uh, opening myself to being tested by three different agencies, it, it shows that I have nothing to hide. You know, USADA and VADA have been around for so long. They work with so many extremely successful athletes, guys who are a lot more uh, influential than I am, guys who, uh, they, they've worked with the who's who's, you know, and um, they're very credible. And I, I feel like them giving me my license um, shows that, that I am innocent and that uh, this doesn't help my performance at all. And uh, yeah, and I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for everything to be out in the open and, and accessible for everybody to see. And this man's saying, you know, he's a better fighter, but I'm a better martial artist. That makes absolutely zero sense. One thing I know about myself is if you, if you back me into a corner, you're going you're gonna to force me to bite you. John Jones's dominance dispatched yet another contender. Just like that, plain and simple. The champion won the fight in a one-sided fashion, and even despite the situation with an illegal knee in the fourth round, he still won via unanimous decision and earned another UFC title defense. Hats off to Anthony Smith for, for having a lion heart. I mean, I think the average person would have used that as a way out and became a world champion. Um, he, was, uh, he was tired, he had been hit with the kitchen sink, and I mean, I did an illegal blow. And he decided to allow the fight to continue. And I'm so proud of him for just just being a real warrior out there and, and continuing the fight. Sure, all of that is really cool. We mean the fact that John Jones finally came back into the game and truly showed that he is not done. But either way, the arc about the dark side is not over yet. You didn't forget about it, right? What we're saying is that despite not having big headlines with his name about doping usage, Inner Demons did not want to let Bones go. After his return in March of 2019, there was information that the fighter harassed the waitress in one of the strip clubs. At first, he denied these allegations, but then openly admitted it. Another arrest for John was resolved rather lightly. He was asked to avoid the problems with the law for around three months and also stop abusing alcohol and drugs. Are you a good guy trying to be bad or are you a bad guy trying to be good? That's a good question. I think I am a bad guy that's trying to be good. Just because religiously we're all sinners. We're all sinners. We're born into sin. It's our nature to, to sin. And, um, and it's a decision to try to do the right thing. You know, it's, it's a decision to do the right thing when no one's looking, right? And so um, I, think, I think all of us as humans, none of us are and, uh, and it's our choice to try to be more than. And so, so I, would, I had to say I'd lean closer to being an imperfect human that's trying to do the right things and be good. Sure, such successful careers are not over after these kinds of cases. However, they perfectly add the missing pieces to the image of the greatest fighter of all time and present him in a different light. All in all, after Anthony Smith, there was another Brazilian representative in line, Thiago Santos. And this fight is interesting for the reason that many still believe that Jones lost it. But let's not get ahead. In July of the same year, when John fully returned in the title picture and conquered the belt, his next defense was against a Brazilian contender in the main event at UFC 239. Most people are afraid of their best selves. Mm -hmm. right, Maya Angelou, whatever I said, biggest fear is not that we're inadequate, but that we're powerful beyond measure to kill all your vices and just try to be the best mother you can be. It was really scary. It feels very familiar to be here. You know, when you fight so often, um, you just get this comfort where you just, you know, you feel in your zone. Um, I feel the way I did when I when I was like, like super young fighting just back to back to back. Um, only difference is I'm a little more mature, and more, a little more sure, and, um, and my team, and myself, 
and uh, I'm in a good place. I'm really excited yeah. to be here. Well, I'll let you go here in a second, but getting back real quickly to Tiago, I asked him if uh, if he doesn't knock you out, can he beat you? You know, in other words, is the knockout his only path to victory? And he said, no, he could, he could outfight you for five rounds. What do you think? Is, is the knockout really the only way that this guy beats you? Mm, it's good that he has confidence in himself. Um, it's good that he believes that. Uh, I don't believe that to be true. I believe that I'm the more technical fighter and the more complete fighter. Um, but, you know, we just got to go out there and see. I got to go out there and prove that to be true. And that's what, what I believe I will do. And speaking about the fight, we'll put it this way. Bones managed to win, but for the first time in his career, it was a split decision. Before that, when Jones went the full distance in his fights, the decision was always unanimous and in the champion's favor. But this time, only two judges gave their nod to Jones with a score of 48 to 47, while the third one thought that the Brazilian was the one victorious. It's the first and only case when one of the judges did not pick John Jones as the winner. Yeah, you know, he was, he was extremely powerful. You know, his kicks were powerful, his punches were powerful. And I wanted to play a smart game. Um, it probably been, would have been a lot smarter to get him to the ground and test him there. Uh, but I felt like I was winning at what he was absolute best at, you know. Um, I feel like his team had him optimally prepared. His cardio was great. Um, his punches and kicks were great. And I felt like I, that was his best, you know, that was his best. And I, and I found a way to win on the feet at what he's absolute best at. Just in case, we remind you that oftentimes after another win, Bones usually goes on a spree, which inevitably ends with not the most pleasant consequences for him. It hasn't been even a year since the last incident, and Jones got in trouble once again. Literally a few weeks later, in March, the fighter got arrested another time. He was sitting in his car at 1am and shooting his gun in the air. Possibly the reason for that were illegal substances. And it's not our personal opinion, but rather the most widespread one. In the end, the fighter had a plea bargain and got one year of probation, two days of community service, and a $500,000 fine. In other words, he got off lightly. But he didn't want to put his career on hold because of that, the way it seemed at first, as his next defense in the light heavyweight division happened only on April the 8th of 2020. His opponent was Dominic Reyes, a very promising prospect from America who was making big moves in the fighting game and by the time of facing Jones had a record of 12 victories, six in the UFC and six outside of it. It went down at UFC 247. Uh, I am. I'm excited. Obviously, we all get nervous, and the guys have said they're not nervous at all. It's probably a dangerous spot to be in, right? You, uh, this game requires a certain amount of nerve. Um, but the, my excitement definitely outweighs any level of nervousness. Um, I feel like I just saw you guys not too long ago. Yeah. And, and I like this rhythm, I like this pace that I'm on. I, I do feel like Dominic has everything to win in this situation. Um, you know, he's relatively unknown. Uh, but that's why I'm gonna. That's that's why I'm training as hard as I, I can. You know, I was 240 last week. I'm 230 this week. I'm taking him extremely seriously. I watch his fights every single day, um, and um, because he's unknown, you know, people would expect someone in my position to take him lightly, and that's where guys uh, in my position would fall. Um, you know, I'm I'm reading a, a book called uh, Relentless right now, and uh, it talks about being a a, a cleaner. And uh, I'm trying to be a cleaner, dude. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna dominate for years and years to come. And uh, so I gotta take him very seriously. Mm, every fight's different. Some guys I look at, and some guys uh, I don't. Um, it's just all based on kind of my mood at the time. And um, so you know, some guys I wanna let them know that hey, I'm here. I'm taking you uh, deadly seriously. As history taught us. The last performance of John Jones in the light heavyweight division resulted in his win via unanimous decision. Though it wasn't an easy fight for him, Bones gave all of himself and set a record for the most title wins in history. It feels good, it feels surreal, man. It, it, uh, I think I had a moment just a second ago, I, I shed some tears. I think it really hit me, yeah. And uh, it's amazing, man, it's amazing, man. I get to be up there with some of, uh, some of history's greats, man. By the way, 
here we have to say a couple of more words, after the fact, so to speak. Man, man, I, f I do feel disrespected, you know. Um, one of the judges had it 49 46. Like, who are you? I might want to have a word with you. Uh, but other than that, man, I know I, I, know I won that fight. I, I know I won that fight. I was in that fight. I don't have to watch the replay. I was there. I, I made John Jones look like just a man. I, I brought the fight to him. And, uh, man, this f***ing man. It seemed like the loss to John Jones in the close fight had a huge impact on Dominic because the further career of this guy went downhill immediately and abruptly. Without any smooth transitions, in September he fought Jan Blakovic and lost at the 4 minute and 29 second mark of the second round. Then, the same thing happened in the fight with Yuri Prohaska, but this time it was 4 minutes and 29 seconds. And the last loss came in the clash with Ryan Spann after just 80 seconds from the start of the round. The Devastator faded away right in front of our eyes and it is unlikely that he will be able to return to the previous level as it seems like John Jones took his soul on top of a zero in the professional record. You know, you hear people say, you don't lose, you learn. And uh, I'm really grateful to have a win and such a learning experience. Um, Dominic did a tremendous job. I respect him dearly. I respect him wholeheartedly. And um, what a way to put yourself uh, in the history books. Um, doing it with such a hard-earned fight. We move on. Layoff. Even though the last fights of Bones, which are also his title defenses, happened to be close, not counting the rematches with Cormier and Gustafsson, he was still in his prime in the literal sense of the word. 32 years of age for an already most dominant fighter in history is the time when he is at the top of his powers, where he is simply invincible. Many people continue to speculate on who should be the next opponent for John Jones in the division, and there were a lot of candidates because by that time, the UFC signed many new guys from different disciplines. However, Bones thought differently. Around May of 2020, there was a big wave of hate, controversy and conflicts in the world's best league regarding the fighter's pay. In the main promotion itself and in comparison to other sports. As many of you already know, Jones sided with the majority's opinion, which caused a real conflict between him and Dana White. On top of that, other issues also came into play. For example, the UFC treatment towards Bones and other small things of the sort. But still, the main factor in John's decision to postpone his return was his goal to move up in weight. As a result, in August, the company's president announced that the light heavyweight title became vacant. Well, I know that John right now wants to take time and do things that he wants to do. Um, I mean, if you follow him on Instagram, been doing a lot of shooting he likes to work with these attack dogs and lifts a lot of weights and i think he's having fun you know living his life a little bit and i think when this whole heavyweight thing plays out we'll see what what works for him thus the mma community lost john jones for more than three years for all that time he did not leave social media constantly posted training footage and current condition because he did not put his plans on moving up in cold storage. On the contrary, he did everything to naturally gain mass, get used to it and figure out what it feels to move like a heavyweight. The media community also regularly raised some questions about Bones' status as the UFC fighter. Dude, what do you think about Johnny Bones coming back? So, what do you think about this? Because this is exciting. This is interesting, right? At that time, the heavyweight division was going through changes as well. After the end of the Mirchich Cormier trilogy, the world's best league gave another opportunity to Francis Ngannou, who managed to knock Stipe out on the second attempt and snatch the world championship. Jones did not stay on the sidelines and hinted that he is ready to fight the Cameroonian predator. It just comes down to the size of the bag. 
Dana White's reaction. If I'm John Jones and I'm home watching this fight, I start moving to 85. <laughs> Listen, I can sit here all day and tell you, you know, what show me the money mean? I tell you guys this all the time. If you can say you want to fight somebody, you know, but do you really want to? You won't believe it, or you will, who knows? But this matchup was really discussed on the internet, and not only by the media representatives and the fans community, but by the fighters themselves. Working so, on that too. Hopefully, you know, he should fight this year. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. It's all going to depend on um, on Francis and his, and his knee. What's going on with the heavyweight division right now? We got Ninganu's coming off a knee injury. We got Jones maybe in the wings. Stipe in the wings. What's going on? Who's the next heavyweight championship title fight? Yeah, uh, I think that John John Jones will be the next fight at heavyweight. Um, He's not a champion. I know. So who's he fighting? Well, hopefully Francis. With Francis Nagano, it's very it's very simple. Get comfortable with the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is he knocks you the f out. He possibly fractures a bone in your face. That's the worst case scenario. You get real comfortable with that idea, and then it becomes easy. If he doesn't knock you out and break your face, you're smart, you're fast, you have a chin, you have great head movement. You know, you, you can wrestle. You can. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of ways things things can play out. So I just think about the worst case scenario, and get yourself mentally to a place where you're almost walking into that. Like, okay, I'm getting ready to go out there, and this guy could possibly hurt me tonight. Okay, now that I've faced that, I've swallowed that. I'm sure you have the similar conversation sure. before you jump off something. You're like, okay, well, this right. could go this way. For sure. Yeah. So that's the way I look at it. It's like, yeah, Francis Ngano is dangerous, yes. I believe that he has a chance to knock me the f out. Let's say, let's say that out loud. But um, if I don't get knocked out, I believe I win that fight. I just got to get through round one, and I win that fight. And I think for me, uh, he's going to be very good because John Jones, he looked a little slower. And as a, uh, in the past two years, he's been putting some weight on trying to uh, be heavy to come fight at heavyweight and I think that won't make it any fast. Unfortunately, we didn't see that fight. Soon Nganu left the organization after the very first title defense. The UFC belt became vacant once again. How is John 35 now? How old is John now? He got to be young. Well, he's fairly young. Kamal is 36. John's 35, yeah, come, which yeah. is prime for a heavyweight. We remind you that by that moment, we haven't seen Bones for around three years since his win over Dominic Reyes. And there it was, the ray of hope finally shined in the distance. Yeah, no, John Jones will fight next year, for sure. Finale. You know, if you look at the fight with Francis and, and, and Cyril, it was, it was a damn close fight. So there's no doubt that those two guys are the best heavyweights in the world. And for John to come out and face either one of them is exciting. It's fun. The end of 2022 can be called that very moment. The moment of truth. The most anticipated and desired one in the last couple of years in MMA. It was the moment when the landscape of the heavyweight division began to clear out and announcements about the legendary Bones appeared on the horizon. You know, we've been working on a new agreement with Francis for like two years now. And uh, we had gotten to a point where, uh, you know, he was going to fight John Jones. And many, many who believe, including me, that he's the best of all time. Um, you know, for, for the heavyweight championship. And John Jones has been willing and ready and able to fight anybody. He didn't care who it was. Could have been anybody in the heavyweight division. He was ready to go. Um, and Francis, we, we offered Francis a deal that would have made him the highest paid heavyweight in the history of the company. More than Lesnar, more than anybody. Um, and he turned the deal down. After the Predator left, the world's best league did not spend too much time on further considerations. The perfect opponent for Bones was Cyril Garn. At that time, the Frenchman had a record of 11-1, was interim champion and had an opportunity to fight for the real belt. After losing to Nganu via decision, Cyril had time to return to the winning path and wanted to welcome John Jones in his comeback like nobody else. 
I'm so happy uh, <laughs> about that. To have John Jones in this division, gonna put some more um, light. You understand? Yes. The division gonna shine in a little bit more and more. Yeah. And uh, so that's why I'm so happy to have this guy in this division. So I don't know what's gonna happen exactly in the few months. We uh, the people talk about Stipe again, uh, again Jones, but I'm here. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I'm here. On the same day, it became known that Bones would share the octagon with the French prospect on March the 4th at UFC 285. The vacant heavyweight championship would be on the line. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a big believer in ring rust. I think, I mean, Ali took three years off and, and, and didn't look the same when he came back. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with John. One of the things that, you know, John has put the weight on naturally, though. He didn't do it overnight. It's taken, taken a long time, and he's ready to roll. He's, he's excited to fight, so we'll see what happens. Of course, John Jones knew all of that, and he wanted to get the answers to the asked questions as much as the fans. However, the most important thing here is that he genuinely believed in his powers and abilities, which happened to be more than enough. I feel great. Honestly, I feel, I feel like a stronger version of myself. You know, I'm not super lean. I don't have a mean six pack like I used to. Um, that took me a while to get used to, you know what I mean? Like back in the day, I would judge like my fitness level by the way I looked in the mirror. You know, I'm a, I'm a heavyweight now. That's why my teammates say, John, you're a heavyweight now. It, you know, it's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say whether it'd be the toughest challenge or not. You know, I I can't predict the future. You know, my, my first Gufshison fight, I wasn't uh, I wasn't expecting him to put on the fight he did, and it was an absolute war. Uh, I am ready for whatever. I'm ready to dominate. But if I don't dominate and, and the fight goes five rounds, I'm ready to press forward. And I'm ready for a dog fight. I'm ready to bleed and sweat and leave my heart out there. Uh, I'm ready for however it goes. I feel pretty prepared for victory. You know, I, I could see him staying composed uh, in the moment. Uh, he fought Taitu Tavasa in front of his home country. I'm, I'm sure that was a massive moment for him. Um, but I'm not Taitu Tavasa. I look nothing like him. I, I don't perform like him. I'm not Derek Lewis. I'm not Francis Nagano much, much different athlete. I'm by far the most versatile athlete he's ever faced, and the most experienced athlete. I feel like Surreal is the most incomplete fighter in the top five right now. Um, he has really good striking, and he has really good footwork. Um, but I've watched his fights, you know? He got tired in his last fight against Francis Nagano. All that fancy footwork, you know, him supposedly being the fastest heavyweight that we've ever seen. All that all that went away. One or two takedowns, making him earn, getting back up to his feet. That, that tired him out big time. I'm a wrestler, and uh, I wrestle people a lot. And it's a different type of endurance, you know. And a lot of people don't like having someone on top of them and having to earn their way back up to his feet. I watched Francis Logano in that last fight. Francis, in the last rounds, could barely move his feet. He could barely lift his legs. He was walking so slowly. Uh, Sirio seems like he seems like a nice guy. Seems like uh, you know he's a great fighter, uh, great footwork, you know, great striking, ambidextrous in, in his stances, and I, I think it's, I think it's going to be a great fight. I think it's going to be a great fight. I respect Sirio. He seems like a, a stand-up young man, and, and it's going to be a great, great fight on Saturday night. Yes, I did a lot of mistake again, Francis, uh, on the wrestling game because I expected uh, more about him striking him. So I was not focused on, on, in, uh, on the wrestling game. So he surprised me. He did well, very well. And you see, he's a really strong guy. So yes, I did a mistake. Tomorrow is going to be against John Jones. Everybody knows the level of uh, the wrestling game of John Jones. But I'm focused about that. I'm focused on it. So we work on it and uh, we're going to be ready for him. It's interesting to hear Cyril say that it was a strength issue. Um, I, I spent a lot of time in the weight room. Um, you know, I, I feel like not only am I a very strong athlete right now, but I have a lot of technique. Uh, it's, it's more than strength. So uh, it, makes, it just makes me feel even better that, that he believes that it was strength that got him to the floor. Um, I'm coming with a lot of strength, a lot of endurance, and most importantly, some pretty strong technique. I'm not going to lose all this, all these years. 
to a guy who is just here right now. That's the way I view him. He's just here right now. His words let me know that he doesn't believe he'll be here for a long time. I'm not losing to a guy like that. I hear that Serial Gains soccer team, his online team is ranked top 60 in the world. I'm sitting here focusing on combat. He's out here playing video games. The job is to have no mercy at the end of the day. Whether he is ready for this opportunity or not, somewhere inside of him that he thinks there's a chance that he's gonna take food off my family's table. So I'm destroying my legacy. And that's something I take very personal. And there's no mercy. I'm probably in France, he's super popular right now. They don't care whether they win or lose. They're, they're glad to be here. They're just glad to be here. I feel like I, I really don't have anything to prove. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like I put in the work. I feel like I deserve a great victory. And that's exactly what I'm gonna have, a great victory. This is his first experience in the heavyweight. He is a light heavyweight. So I got an advantage for this. I got more experience in this division. And trust me, a lot of people underestimate me on my wrestling game. And uh, so yes, we will see this Saturday. As the date was getting closer, the excitement and tension were growing in geometrical progression. Many argued that after the three-year-long layoff, Bones wouldn't be able to return to the previous level. There were many doubts and disputes, as it's always the case in this sport. But to be honest, it wasn't really that important. As the saying goes, thanks everybody for your opinion, and now take a seat and try not to blink. John Jones is going to make history. Certainly applying pressure though, and keeping his head bent down makes it difficult to breathe. He's and making he, him carry his weight. Yes, that's important. Jones is just making him carry him. And he's putting pressure. Oh! All of these speculations were put to rest as soon as the cage door closed. Two minutes and four seconds, an incredible guillotine at the fence forced the Frenchman to surrender and made John Jones the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion. You know, uh, you know, first and foremost, you, you know what's coming. I gotta give thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Without him, I would have never made it this far. And I tell you what, for all you prayer warriors out there, I felt you so strongly all week. And I just want to thank each and every one of you who prayed for me. Oh, yeah, baby. Y'all want to see me beat him, Stipe? One thing I know about the UFC is we give the fans what they want to see. Stipe Miocic, I hope you're training, my guy. You're the greatest heavyweight of all time, and that's what I want. I want you real bad. Last thing. Anybody deny this guy is the GOAT anymore? I, I don't think anybody would deny it. Um, not only is he the greatest light heavyweight ever, he looks like the greatest heavyweight ever too. So th there were a couple of interviews leading up to this fight where he was saying, I'm gonna make this look easy. And I thought that was a silly thing to say. Um, the guy is unfucking believable, man. He really is. L let's just put it this way. I, I mean, John Jones, there's no doubt that John Jones is special. He's, he's the greatest of all time. He's undefeated. He's never lost a fight ever in the UFC. He's fought all the best competition out there. I've never felt more at peace. I've never felt more happy. Last night at my, at my, uh, my, my fight dinner, I almost cried. I felt like I was living in a dream. I looked around and I, I just saw so many leaders. Triumphal return of the king was complete and it happened in the best way possible. John Jones clearly showed his exceptionality even in comparison to the fighters from a different weight class. He made a statement in the fighting game proving that after three years of break, he is still the best in the world which is once again confirmed by the pound for pound rankings. But it wasn't the end. As you know, right after his victory over Cyril Gunn, Bones called out Stipe Miocic, the best heavyweight of all time, setting a new direction in the development of the heavyweight division and letting everybody know what he wants to do next. And I've been training for Stipe for a long time right. already. And so we're just gonna pick, pick up our old notes. We're gonna re-refine them and I'm going to finish Stipe Miocic. Mm. I don't come to win, 
I come to dominate Steve Miocic, and that's exactly what I am going to do. For the heavyweight championship of the world, John Jones, the greatest mixed martial artist of all time, will defend his title against the greatest heavyweight of all time, former champ Steve Miocic. They headline UFC 295 on Saturday, November 11th at the Mecca, Madison Square Garden in New York City. The event was targeted for the second to last month of 2023 and the fans cannot wait for it to happen. I don't know, I think a lot of things, I think this uh, something he's never seen before. I, I, know, I know it's cliche and everyone says it, but honestly that's the truth. At this point I still get really nervous, man. I have, I have nightmares about my opponents. Um, about every hour, Stipe Miocic crossed my mind. Stipe will cross my mind. He will cross my mind. I, I could be having a drink. I could be, you know, I could be, you name it. You know, he crosses my mind. I could be at my kid's volleyball game and you know, I'm thinking about Stipe. You know, when you think about the, um, the legacy of, of Jones, the legacy of Stipe, the greatest mixed martial artist of all time versus the greatest heavyweight of all time. After he moves up the heavyweight, it's, it's a fight that had to happen. and. Uh, no better place for it to happen than Madison Square Garden. As the tournament was getting closer, the fans' anticipation and excitement was growing like crazy. Everybody couldn't wait for UFC 295 that was timed with the promotion's 30th anniversary and counted the days for Jones's another walkout to the octagon. But something bad happened. Nearly at the very last moment, Bones got an injury that required surgery and pulled out of the bout. Eventually, there was some shuffling on the card, and now we got an interim champion in the face of Tom Aspinall. We think that after Jones's recovery, he will ultimately fight Stipe Miocic and drive into the sunset to have a deserved rest. Epilogue Around 2010, 2011, um, I went through this huge spiritual thing where I, um, I became obsessed with um, the power of the mind. And um, I got into a deep, like really deep, just um, meditation, visualization, and just realizing how powerful our minds actually are, like how we really do paint our world with our thoughts and, and our level of self-belief. John Jones, with no exaggeration, is the greatest fighter of all time, an undefeated and undisputed champion of the UFC in two of the most stacked and dangerous weight classes, an absolute king of the sport, the guy who stands untouchable in comparison to every fighter on planet Earth, inimitable performer, the best current MMA representative, legendary athlete, unbreakable and hungry beast who was destined to carry the burden of being the best fighter regardless of weight classes. The youngest champion in UFC history and the oldest one right now. In terms of the sport, he is a true standard. Everyone who fought him in the octagon, from a beginner prospect to a seasoned veteran, looked average in front of John. And though outside of the octagon his actions were quite controversial, this characteristic only adds to his image and shows the level of his greatness because not every athlete would be able to return to the previous position after everything Bones had to go through. When this guy leaves, the fighting community will have a long time waiting on his reincarnation. Just imagine this for a second to dominate for more than 13 years in MMA in the biggest league at an elite level and have the capacity to stop each and every one in his way, it's mind-boggling, frankly speaking. Only the figure of John Jones with all his controversies and flaws was able to achieve that. We are very lucky to live in this time and have an opportunity to witness that. It's hard to put in words all the gratitude and feelings that overwhelmed us while we were working on this documentary. We hope that you liked this video and you experienced the same range of emotions as we did while going through all the stages of Bones MMA career from the beginning to the very end. Thanks for watching. See you soon. My question is for uh, is for John Jones. John, uh, you're a freaking inspiration. I love you, man. But like Kanye West, it is hard to be your fan. What? 
What a... Uh, <laughs> John Jones, who's in the UFC still, has never been beat. I know. This guy has beat everybody. And when you talk about real fighting, you know, when you talk about who the baddest man is in the, on the planet is, when you talk about that, the real definition of what that means, you throw two guys in a room and who comes out. Yeah. Okay? That's the baddest man on the planet. And, it's, it, it, and, it, and it, it is hard to not say that John Jones is that guy right now. I'll tell you who I would take. I would take Tyson before he went into prison. Mike Tyson. I thought I, uh, for those 100%, for but those Tyson three years. doesn't know the ground game. Tyson can't grapple. Ty, there's no, Tyson's hanging over here. His quote is on the wall over here. <laughs> Nobody loves Mike Tyson more than I do, believe me. But when you talk about putting two guys in a room, who comes out? John Jones has the tools to beat everybody.